In this short video, I will show a simple workflow for sculpting cracks with a combination of the clay buildup, pinch, move, dam standard, and trim smooth border brushes that are included with ZBrush. Hello everyone, uh, Seth Thompson here. Today I'm going to quickly show you just a simple technique you can use with a lot of the standard brushes that are included with ZBrush to do cracks like this. Um, and I'm not using anything special, I'm not doing any alphas, anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I'll kind of just show you quickly some of the techniques I like to do. And this is just a little gargoyle that I created recently all in uh, ZBrush. So just so that I can do things a little more efficiently, I'm going to hide these uh, wings so that I'm only working with this base layer. And we'll just uh, come in here to the front and start working on this. So my brushes, the uh, main ones I'm going to use are Clay Buildup and uh, Dam Standard and there's one called Trim Border Smooth and uh, Pinch Brush. So just starting with the clay buildup, um, this can allow you to do one of two things. Like if you want to get a cut in here that's a little more um, kind of broken up like this, I, you know, you don't need to go much further than just using the clay buildup. By default it's set to Add, so let's change that to a Z sub. And um, literally all I do is I just kind of draw out whatever I think looks like a, a cool crack pattern to the various uh, locations that I want it to connect to within the scene. You know, trying to maintain not too much of a curvy thing like right here because that doesn't feel super natural. So we'll need to address that just a little bit to make sure that that looks good. But we can do that with a move tool. But anyways, I just kind of cut in here deeply and um, do my straight lines first and then I just keep coming back through, cutting a bit. Usually the areas where it meets here on the edges. Um, in this case, since this is supposed to feel like a really weathered gargoyle has been here for maybe hundreds of years, um, all usually around the uh, areas where the um, cracks terminate, I'll um, give it like a little bit more breakup as you're seeing me do right here. And you know, sometimes it's kind of cool to have one where it looks like it just comes across. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's very easy. Just come through here, break up a little bit of the edges sometimes so it doesn't feel super generic or too CG. And a lot of times what I'll do too is I'll come in and I'll do some undercuts so that you get some nice shadows falling off uh, where these different locations meet. Yeah, displacement, you know, depending on how far away you're going to see something like this, it's all about uh, exaggerating things a bit so that it'll really show up whenever you render it out. But right away you can see that we start to quickly get something that's feeling pretty good. Now if we wanted to as well, um, what I like to do sometimes is I'll come through and I use a brush called the Trim Smooth Border. Um, for those of you guys that haven't customized ZBrush, uh, you can find that by coming here to brush. Uh, if you find where the trim folder is, come into here and trim smooth border, it's this one. So let's double click that. And basically this will just work along a normal and kind of flatten it out a little bit. And I just like using this sometimes on uh, corners and edges to get just a, a little bit more polygonal shape into the edges. And it almost works like a nice little polisher as well. This this is particularly good to use on um, surfaces that you want to be a bit more sharp, like maybe a, a crystal or things like that. And it's all based on the uh, normal, wherever you connect it to. So that's how the angle will kind of cut through. And sometimes it gets a little large and then you'll see it starts to affect another area. But it's a pretty useful tool. I like using that just to break up these um, really kind of hard CG edges. And even that, you know, it, it's just like a little bit of an imperfection, but it feels kind of cool, almost like uh, something got chipped out of here. Um, now this still feels a little bit too curved to me, so what I'm gonna do is just come in with our Move tool. and just make that feel maybe a little bit more straight or angular. And some 
places. Yep. And then if you want to do something like come in here and start to taper off the edges, just simply uh, go and use the pinch tool. And you can make it look like it's kind of fading there. And sometimes I use the pinch tool also uh, in the centers of areas where maybe you want it to feel like it's a little bit tighter. Another place that you can use it sometimes people like to go back to an edge and run it along there just so it feels like maybe it's a, a sharper cut. You can do that too. Like maybe here it's gotten too wide, so we just want to cut it down a bit. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, this is just the example of how I use it with a clay buildup tool. The other one that um, you can use is just the uh, dam standard. And with the dam standard, it's pretty much the same thing, but allows you to create something that's a little bit more clean. The thing I just, you know, I, I, I like using that clay buildup just because it gives it a little bit more uh, weather and tearing to it automatically. But you can do it with this. This is uh, sometimes how I like to do it. I mean, the one advantage to this that's uh, kind of cool is sometimes what I'll do is uh, I, I'll, like up here, you see how this kind of pops out on the edge. What I like to do sometimes is I'll invert what we have going on here just by holding down Alt, and I'll go along the edge just to pop it a little bit. So once you cut it, then come up here and then um, pop this out. And then you can come back with something like the uh, clay build-up tool and bring that down. It's probably even better actually to, to pop it out with the clay build-up tool if you want to do that and get that little extra edging around there. Like that would never happen especially on stone in real life you wouldn't have the cut and then it creates and displaces a new surface on the top however in CG it catches nice light when you do something like that so that's why I like to do this sometime and then you can kind of come back over and just really quickly smooth that out by holding down the shift key a little bit yeah and I mean obviously this isn't perfect but you kind of get the idea um, yeah really simple to do it this way so what I'll try and do uh, maybe for the next video is show you how you can actually make a, a nice crack brush with a combination of an alpha from Photoshop and changing some different stroke settings uh, with a brush in order to make that happen. But uh, hopefully you guys find this useful. And um, I know it's simple, but uh, sometimes I guess the simple things are the ones that people don't think about as much. So come back again next time and uh, yeah, I. We'll try and figure out something else cool to show you guys. Thanks for watching.